just want to pick up on where that message was going. I, I feel uh, part of Jenny and my journey was the privilege of being there, but as soon as we walked outside of uh, aircon and Wi-Fi, we went, um, uh, what do we do now? Some things we are so privileged to have and so dependent on. When the power goes off, we, what, what are we doing now? There was a moment there we were just about to cook a special meal for some visitors coming, and we discovered uh, the power. Don't let me get this lost in all that. I just want to share God's word with you this morning. Would you bow with me as we ask Jesus, Holy Spirit, to reveal how much you love us? Bring us into a new revelation of what it is that you want for each one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. I've entitled what I'm sharing with you this morning, What Makes You Tick? What makes you tick? <coughs> Who holds the conviction that I was sharing up there that we are fearfully yeah. and wonderfully yeah. known? Yeah. You know, there are so many lies being presented in our schools and universities and places about who we, uh, how we came to be here and the purpose of our life, that there's great confusion. Uh, it demarks the real worth of our lives. It steals away our identity and our purpose. Uh, it downgrades us to nothing but slime and time. But I'm not an accident going somewhere to happen and nor you. The truth is, I was and I am a masterpiece of God, designed with purpose and designed with a desire. The desire of God is imprinted in this creation. The design of God is in this creation, but the desire of God is also in that creation. Today I want to ask you this question. What were you made for? Why was I created? That's a very basic, simple question, but it's one that's tied to our purpose and our identity. And if evolution even sneaks into our thinking, it robs us of that reality that God had a dream. God was not lonely. God was not without. Let me not get ahead on my notes. We weren't just created for worship. Worship's wonderful. To help me get this across this morning, I brought the humble clock with me. It would be funny to hold it upside down. There we go. I, I want to ask you, for what purpose was a clock created? What does this do? Well, if you're sitting this clock, it's ticking. <laughs> but that's not its purpose. It does tick. This one's good. If I said to you, uh, here's a clock. It was designed by someone. It's wonderfully made. It has a purpose. And the person who created the clock was trying to help us with something. What was that? You're all afraid to answer. <laughs> yes, you're wrong. Time. The keeping of time. And even when I say time, it's which time? Whose time? Because huh? time itself is tied back to somewhere. Greenwich Mean Time. Have you ever been there? Are you still on that line? Aren't you and I still on that line where you change time? The humble clock was made with a purpose by the person that designed it. And I didn't do my research because I don't know who made the first clock. But I want to say this. <laughs> If I said to you, here's a clock, and you became frustrated with the clock and said, what a useless clock. I tried to use it as a fan, but it's way too slow. <laughs> or we're still, I, I tried to mow the lawn with it, but the hands moved way too slow. If I even gave it to you and said, here's a clock, and you said, I held its hand, but I didn't feel any compassion. <laughs> <laughs> See, the clock wasn't designed for any of those things. The, de the clock was designed with a purpose. Am I coming through? Yeah, good. Very good. This clock could be used as a placemat or a pot plant holder or whatever, whatever, whatever. But reality is this clock has a purpose based on its design. Let me 
let's think about our question again. Why would you create it? Oh, I'm going to be annoyed by that ticking. Huh? <laughs> Shh. I'm trying to preach. What did God intend? I believe, and time doesn't permit me to waffle or expand it too much, but I believe the core purpose and heart of God when he created you and me was love. See, we're created in his image, and the Bible says in so many places, God is love. So it makes sense to me that he's going to create something he can love. It's going to, it makes sense to me that he's creating something he can put love into. If, if I look at myself as an empty vessel, and I can fill it with good works, and I can fill it with all sorts of achievements, and I can fill it with ministry, and, but actually, number one primary purpose, God created us for love. Uh, while I was away and internet was not with me, I, what do you do? You read a book. I read this wonderful book, Five Minutes. And a lot of what I want to share today comes from here. The fact that God had a purpose, just like when we created the book, He had a purpose for us. So just acknowledging, if you get hold of this book, I gave like 15 copies of this away, and I thought I'd better read it before I started giving it away. So uh, it, it's, it's a great little book to bring out the points that I'm sharing briefly this morning. If I go back to the very first commandment, or if I use Jesus, you know, wrapping up the commandments and saying there's these two. See, you see, the uh, Pharisees had added commandments to the commandments. Our connect group was speaking about this, talking about the other day. 613 laws that we have to keep now. But you know, Jesus takes it right back to these two. Listen to them. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the greatest and most command, uh, important commandment. I find it right there. Purpose for my creation, love God. Yeah. To love Him and to know His love. Yeah. Number one. I, all the other things we can do, worship Him and serve Him and minister and go on a mission or whatever, Secondary, love God. And the second commandment Jesus said is like that, uh, love each other as I have loved you. Well, how do he love me? How does he love me? Oh, well, we've got to do some searching around this topic. His love for me was so great that he wouldn't let me go. So here's my first point, and it's probably my only point this morning. We were created by a God of love, to know love, and to live in that space of his love. Love was and is the primary purpose for which he created us in his image. 1 John 4, 7 and 9 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Keep reading, I'm moving. We need to know his love and we respond to that. Interesting, when Paul is summing up the good things God has given us, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's all these gifts, there's all these abilities, there's all these God-inspired things that are going to be in your life. And he gets to the end of the chapter and he says, these three remain. Come on, call out to me. Faith, hope, and love. These things remain. All these things you have from the Holy Spirit, all these gifts and abilities are wonderful, but these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these, you got it, is love. Is love. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, uh, when the angel was taking messages back to the individual churches, uh, there's a rebuke because one church was doing a lot of stuff, was doing some great work, but they had forgotten their first call. What was that? You had fallen from your first love. Repent and do what you did at first. 
What did you do when you first fell in love? I'm talking to couples here probably now. Oh man, we went out of the way to hear from each other, to spend time with each other, to love on each other, to gift each other. Well, I don't know what your love language is, but you know, whether it was serving or gifting or talking, talking, talking. When love is the center of our life and God is the center of that love, we're fulfilling our purpose. We're, as it were, ticking in time with the Creator. What makes you tick? We can be, and I felt this, I'm going to use the word rebuke, but, you know, God does sometimes speak harshly to us. I felt this when we were away, when we were kind of isolated from all our comforts and all our freedoms and all our normality. It's like, God must be pleased with me, I'm on a mission. And then I was preparing this word and thinking, actually, what pleases them is when we're in love with them. If we can go on our mission and we can be on the team and we can work hard, all of that. I'm not demoting that. But I'm saying, you know, the clock was designed to tell time. And when we put anything else in there and say, can it cook the cake or can it back? No. We'll have to modify it. You're hearing me this morning? We were created by a God of love who said the first commandment the first thing I want you to remember is love me and love one another. And if love became the core of our lives, he wouldn't have to speak to us like he did to the church in Revelation. You've forgotten your first call. Return to that place of love. Why, why am I talking about this aspect of love this morning? Because God demonstrated his love. He didn't just say, you've got to believe me, but you've got to believe me, I love you. And how did he demonstrate his love for us? 1 John 14. This is love. Not that we loved God initially, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the gift that takes away our sin. I read that, that last scripture. He is the gift. He, he gave his son. We all know, we quote it. John 3, 16, 17. He loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to die for us. He didn't come here to condemn us, correct us, chastise us. He came that we might be saved. His love was the core of salvation. Going on, 1 John 4, 16 and 17. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in his love abides in God and God in him. This purpose, love, can become our core, our, our, our walk, our talk. It can be like an engine that's pulling the wagon, the, the, the carriages, not the other way around. If love is the engine, then everything else that follows is towed in that way. Going on, verse 17, love has, perf has perfected among us uh, that we may have boldness. I put in the word confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so we are in this world. Hang on. As he is, so are we in this world. That's why John chapter 17, before Jesus leaves, he says, uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. Jesus didn't say because you have a great church or you keep a good ministry. Jesus didn't say they'll know that you are my disciples because the books are in order. This, this is how the world is going to know that we were designed by a God of love and we live in that love. John 17, Jesus said by this, they'll know that you have love for one another. This world is full of hatred and bitterness. Jenny and I heard some horrific stories from people we knew that now live in PNG. 
stories of animosity, stories of, of brokenness, stories of loss, death. They really happen all around us. But we're blessings as well. We were created by the God of God and we're full of life. And Jesus says in John 17, if the world could see that life, if the world could see that life, because as he is, so are we in this world. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit emphasizing that line. I'm in 1 John 4, verse 17. Because as he is, once we discover who made us and why he made us, we're in a prime position to minister to the world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out of fear. Because fear is motivated by torment or involves torment. I just wanted us to come back to this point today. It's not very complex, it's not very high up, it's fundamental, it's powerful. God loved us with an everlasting love. There are so many pages of scriptures I could be bringing right now. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. There's so many verses about this love factor in God. But I just wanted us to bring, I want to bring us back to this because in a couple of weeks' time, according to the clock, we will be celebrating the greatest love event that ever took place on the planet. Because while we still were facing the other direction, he was standing, waiting for us, with open arms, with love, because he always believed that we would respond to the call that he sent us. He wants to make us his children. For many of us, it's the most of us, it's, yeah, I already answered that call. Did you like Pastor Kahui's example last week when he rang us? We will answer that call a little differently. But here's the thing. He wants us to answer the call because he wants us to get this message. I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. And I love those verses I just shared that because of his love, there's no fear. There's no fear that we'll end up in hell. There's no fear that we'll be separated from him. There's no fear that we, we're a where nobody going somewhere to do whatever. All of that goes to the side because perfect love casts out all The God of love sent his best. He gave his all for some nobodies like you and me. And if I can hold that as the foundation of my relationship with God, everything else can get stacked up on top. I can be busy for Him or not. I can go to the, my daily job or I can get a certificate or I can buy a house. Or All those things are great. Please don't miss me. Because in fact, if we have that love relationship with God, we're ready to put into each and every one of those things. That's my one point this morning. God loves you. Loves you, loves you, loves you. He made you for love. He made you because he wants to put love inside of you. Is our worship team ready to come and just rejoin me, please? I know you've probably heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again this morning. There is an anointing that I have felt that in my life has been more powerful than any other. And that is the anointing I call Father's love. When God touches you with love, a whole lot of things just kind of get pushed out of the way. I want to say that to us again this morning. Let God's love touch your life. Maybe that's something you need to respond to this morning. Maybe that's something that uh, we can pray for you this morning. That the love of God would become the core of your relationship with Him. As we approach Easter, as we come, we've got some great things planned over the Easter time. Uh, but
but you know, it could be just Jesus hung on a, tree, on a cross. And what this leads on, this was the ultimate expression of his love for us. That sacrifice. It's come to Easter with this heightened awareness that there was no other way. There was no other remedy for our sin. We were lost without hope. But love broke through it. But love came into our lives, came into our world, and redeemed us for eternity. I'm going to get the worship team just to lead. I'm going to hand this back to Graham. Let's respond to his message on love. Come on, let's stand up.